Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling across the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for some homestyle comfort food favorites from an iconic veteran-owned Eastside Soul Food restaurant. We have all the hits. When yes. you come down here, these are the ones you have to get, right? Yes, these are it. Plus, we take you to a popular deli serving up some serious sandwiches. Cheers to you, Brad. All right, the David, full thank you. serious sandwich out here at Zito's. That's the bite. Here we go. And we travel up to New Braunfels to check out all the best foods Worst Fest has to offer. 10 day salute to the sausage. Yes, salute to you. <laughs> all that and more right now on Texas Eats. Our first stop on today's foodie adventure is off Broadway, just north of 410. Now we're here near the airport in San Antonio to go inside of a shop that's been serving up one of the most iconic sandwiches in the Alamo City since 1974. Let's go inside Zito's. Joining me now is Brad Zito. He's the owner out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. This restaurant has been in San Antonio for decades. It is an iconic spot to visit here when you're in the Alamo City. And the sandwich that's right in front of us is probably one of the most popular sandwiches in the city as well. But how did it all get started? The sandwiches come from my father from Rhode Island, being the Italian that he was, the grinder, the Manhattan, the club sandwich. And then my mother came up with the signature Syria sandwich. It's like the cousin to the mufalata. You said this sandwich, it put your kids through college, yes. through graduate school, got you two weddings, so this weddings, is the one. Yes. That's it. <laughs> it. Comes with pickles on the side, and I love that it comes with two pickles, because why not? You're getting this huge sandwich, might as well get two pickles with it. Cheers to you, Brad. All right, the David, full thank you. Syria sandwich out here at Zito's, that's the bite. Here we go. If you're looking for a big sandwich, you've got to get the full serious sandwich out here at Zito's. This thing is loaded, very similar to the muffaletta sandwich, where it has the olives and the cheese and the different cold cuts inside of it. But this one actually comes on a pizza crust as well. Super crispy on the outside, it's cheesy, it's gooey, and it is a lot of food. Let's love. Woo! Nice bite to it. The acidity is really great. Toast on the outside, the cheese. I mean, this thing is just dripping with flavor. This is fantastic. What I love about this, everything is blended together. People that don't like olives or don't like onions, they don't even know they're on there. It's really classic. We, we come twice a week sometimes. I come out, but I have serious. I've been doing that for years. Which sandwich is this one? So this is the Italian. I try to, people that eat the serious all the time and they want to try something else, the Italian, this one is a small, I recommend the small just because of the flavor, it just the way the, the oven heats it really well. Okay, you take the bottom one, I'm gonna All take right. the top one. All right. This is the Italian sandwich, and here's the bite. That's the bite. That is incredible. I love the flavors the, on this one. So this has your mm. capicola, bruzzatini, uh, hard salami, provolone cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, basil, oregano, and Italian dressing. This is everything you want. When you think of an, an Italian bite, that classic flavor, this is it. Absolutely. It has that kind of vinegar bite that you expect from an Italian sandwich, plus the cold cuts in there. Everything is sliced right here in-house, and the bread is made in-house as well. Plus, it comes with a pickle and their iconic beans. The beans on the plate is also a little special story, right? Yes, absolutely. So my mother wanted a starch to go along with the sandwiches. She remembers the depression. When we get to the ends of the hams and salami, she wanted to use them, so she decided to chop them up and cook them with the beans. Comes with every sandwich. Yes, that is correct. Except the serious, it just doesn't fit on the plate. But I was gonna say, you don't need it with them. <laughs> yeah, and, and we sell cups of beans, bowls of beans, right. gallons of beans. Now we're moving on to the sandwich here in the middle. So this is gonna be your Manhattan. Okay. This was uh, one of my father's favorites. It's that coleslaw dressing that's kind of a New York thing. They dress their sandwiches, their burgers with that coleslaw dressing. Normally our corned beef, our Reubens, our Manhattans are on the dark bread, but this one today is white bread. That's a Manhattan, and this thing is juicy. So before you do the Manhattan, we have this hot sauce. Right, it's on every and table. this is the hot sauce. The Manhattan is what brought the hot sauce 
to Zito's. You gotta put a little on your, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load it up here now, just a little bit on the bite. To Frank's Original Red Hot. So, the classic. It's a secret that Zito's, <laughs> we keep it in. We're sharing secrets today, yeah. I like this. All right, we're gonna take a bite of this Manhattan with the Frank's sauce on there, here we go. Super creamy. I love the flavors that are in there. Everything just kind of like melds into one flavor profile. The Frank sauce on there, it adds that little zing yeah. to the bite because it cuts through that creaminess that's on there. The creamy coleslaw that's inside the Manhattan sandwich is delicious. You put some of that Frank's red hot sauce on there, adds that little vinegar bite, a little bit of spice on there as well. That with those house sliced cold cuts and that toasted bread make for a great bite. Pickles on the side as well, because you know, you gotta have a pickle, you feel yeah, a little bit healthy, you, know, you, you gotta go. <laughs> and last but not least, what do you got going so on over there? The club, that's another kind of a, a later in life creation. It, it has ham, turkey, roast beef. It's not your traditional mm -hmm. triple decker club, but it has three meats, it has two cheeses, mustard, mayonnaise if you like, lettuce and tomatoes. It'll put a dent in your appetite. <laughs> and it really, I mean, this is a, a larger sandwich than the ones that we just saw. That is correct. And on the, even on the inside, you can see this thing is just loaded, wrapped up. And I love that you have all the meat on the outside. You're protecting the bread. All right, so you grab a sandwich half. I'm gonna grab a sandwich half. Yeah, and look at that. Just juicy, juicy bites. You guys aren't playing around. These aren't dry sandwiches, people. This is, look at this thing's busting out the side. I love what's going on. Cheers to you. Yes, sir, yes, sir, thank you. you. These are incredible sandwiches. Oh and my they God. are, mm -hmm. they are. The club sandwich out here is absolutely loaded with all different kinds of cold cuts in there and every layer is different, the way they're stacking it. And then they put the cheese in there, they're melting that individually as well. So when you get it, it's just this gooey, cheesy club bite with all the lettuce and the tomatoes in there as well to add that brightness to it, plus the house-made bread that's toasted to perfection. I love the flavors of all the sandwiches, you guys. If you've never been here before, this is definitely a spot you have to visit in the Alamo City. I think this place is just as much of a staple as visiting a Tex-Mex restaurant. Uh, you guys really have, have just set the precedence for what a good sandwich should be. There's so many different options, so many different varieties for everyone. And you also have great desserts that you offer in-house as well, right? Yes, we do. We have fresh baked. The Ultimate Cheesecake Bakery makes us a wide variety of cupcakes. It's a legacy of, of family, of culture, of food, sandwiches, and really, I mean, just everything that you brought here in San Antonio. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for your I'm gonna time. keep eating this sandwich. Absolutely. Maybe some of the series, you guys, Zito's is where it's at. Come out here and get a taste of San Antonio history. Thank you. Now, we're headed to the south side of San Antonio to a family-run barbecue joint serving up some loaded spuds and nachos. Now we're here on the southeast side of San Antonio to go inside of a barbecue spot that's making a name for itself as one of the top places to go in the city. Let's go check out Barbecue Republic. Joining me now is the owner out here, Oscar Torres. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming out. And right in front of us, we have a lot of different items. And I mean, from the sweet to the savory, why barbecue? How did you get started? Barbecue, I, I'm just passionate for barbecue. I've always loved barbecue. I go, I go to every barbecue spot in San Antonio and surrounding areas, and I finally said, you know what, I'm gonna open my own spot. And what a fantastic space you have out here as Thank well. Thank you. I yes. mean, it's very developed. Behind this, you have a, a fun car. It's kind of like... This is Miss, Pr Miss Pristine. Miss Pristine. Yes. So it's got a name, There's too. nothing wrong with her. She's, she's <laughs> intact. I almost start here with the potato. Talk to me about what's inside. This is our Texas tater. It's fully loaded. It has um, butter, cheese, Ooh. sour cream, pico de gallo, jalapenos, oh. chopped brisket. Mm. If you're feeling extra hungry, you gotta get the loaded baked potato. You get brisket in there, a little bit of sour cream, butter, the potatoes cooked perfectly, pico de gallo, jalapenos on top as well. I and mean, this thing is massive. Is this a favorite? It is, it is a big favorite here. We, we do tend to run out, try to meet the demand. Yeah, those spuds are hot out here, y'all. Yeah, you, you, you gotta come get them while you can. <laughs> Our smoked turkey, it's so tender, it's so moist. Yeah. Um, that's one of our best meat sellers, protein-wise. It's really, oh, really good. Yeah. You can tell right there, it's, it still has a nice body to it. Yes. Very tender, nice little bark on the outside as nice well. little smoke ring there too. Mm. Oh, wow. Now the ribs as well, nice bark on the outside. Good. Nice and juicy, <laughs> take a bite. Oh yeah. 
Good little flavor on the outside. It is. Slightly sweet. Yes. I love that bite. That's really nice. Right here. Now this is the king of Texas barbecue. You got the brisket in the middle. It looks like the fatty brisket, sausage, chicken on there. That's our number one seller, our brisket. 16 hours of cooking, wow. super moist, super oh, yeah. flavorful. Look at that. I mean, the brisket test, you hold it up to its own weight, you pull on it, falls apart. Nice bark on there, fat's nice and rendered as well. Marbled cut, here's the bite. Oh baby, give me some blood. When you come out here, you know you gotta try the Texas barbecue. The turkey's nice and tender, the bark on the outside, it gives a good seasoning to the meat, but the brisket is where it's at. The marbled cut has all that fat that's rendered perfectly in there. The bark on the outside is a good little crunch, slight smokiness to it, but overall, I mean, this is where it's at if you wanna try true, authentic Texas barbecue. That is so good. Thank you, mm. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Look at that, crispy skin on the outside. You can see how juicy it is on the inside, nice and tender, I'm gonna go for the bite. Oh, okay. nice, nice. That's real nice. One thing I would have to say about everything, it just has so much flavor to it. You guys are stacking flavors. All your proteins are just so rich. I love that. You can, you can order just a little bit of everything and really enjoy yourself. Between these two barbecue platters, you got a pile of nachos right there, jalapenos, pico de gallo, you got cheese, sour cream, brisket on there. This is a party starter. Yes, it is. And you can choose from your protein of your liking. A lot of people say it's mine, nachos, but this is a shareable amount of nachos here. You get brisket, chicken, all different kinds of proteins on there, and this thing is loaded up. The chips that they're making, they won't tell me what kind they are, but I'll tell you what, they're super crispy, and they hold up to all the toppings that are on there. You get a little bit of the crisp, and you get all that barbecue goodness on there, that's the way to go. <laughs> if you're finishing this to yourself, good on you. That's a lot of food. <laughs> it is. You gotta save room for the sweets, and that's what we got right here different dessert items, but the one in the front, Ooh. talk to me about that. That is one of our newest desserts. Yeah. That is our banana pudding cheesecake, all oh. homemade. I mean, does it get more a... just crazy over the top <laughs> than that? I don't know, here's a bite. There it is. <laughs> I'm out of here. We're taking it all home. <laughs> Give me double. Give me double. I love that. Y'all could just open up a shop and serve that. I'm coming back every it. day Let's of the week. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's incredible. <laughs> Banana pudding cheesecake. It's a bite you didn't know you need. You guys, Barbecue Republic, they're doing something special out here. Come check them out. Looks like it's dog friendly as well. Definitely. Bring the family. Yes. Have a great time. Yes. Watch some TV. Get some sports going on out here. Just enjoy a weekday, a weekend. This is where it's at. All the proteins are rocking. Great company. You guys Thank are you. awesome. Thank you so much for having us out here. I am going to take this whole dessert tray to go for home. For sure. It's all yours. Enjoy. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we head to the Hill Country for some great bites at a cozy historic spot. And next on the show, we get spicy at an authentic Szechuan style eatery. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here on the west side of San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up authentic Szechuan cuisine. Let's go inside Szechuan House. Joining me now is Christina Zhao. Thank you so much for having us out here at the restaurant. Good now you're you. you're kind of like the local uh, like troublemaker, right? I definitely am. <laughs> <laughs> you're also that. responsible for a lot of the flavors that we have here in San Antonio and just leading the charge on bringing authentic Sichuan style Chinese food to the area. So some, we have some of our most popular dishes here, um, definitely Sichuan house staples, the garlicky cold noodles, the famous green beans, mm. your spicy savory chicken, spicy cumin lamb. This is going to be our dry pot shrimp. And then of course, last but not least, the very succulent, delicious melt in your mouth. Dong Po braised pork belly. Food is a very important part of Chinese culture, and I mean, it's it was the one time of the day that all of the family got together to eat, and that's how we present our food, family style, the way that we would eat at home. Right here in front of us, you had mentioned this is the pork belly dish. Mm -hmm. How is it prepared? So that 
dish is going to be marinated, deep fried, cubed, and then steamed. And uh, then all of the, the renderings, the juices that come up from that steaming process is turned into a sweet glaze that goes over the top Ooh. of that pork belly. Cheers. Cheers. Pork belly. That's the bite. Oh, wow. The pork belly out here is savory and sweet, super tender, and all the fat is rendered beautifully in there as well. And the sauce that's on there is savory and sweet mixed together. So when you take the bite, it's like the ultimate combination that you want. Something refreshing, very popular as well. You had mentioned the green yep. beans. How are these prepared? These are going to be flash fried, and then they're going to be sauteed with ginger, garlic, and the yeeping mustard greens. And so it gives it a very savory, earthy flavor. Oh, wow. See that? It's nice and savory. It's unctuous. It, it, the way it's cooked, it has that like, kind of little bit of fatty flavor on there as well that you want. Right here. I mean, classic dish, right? Talk spicy, to me about what's going on. Spicy cumin lamb. You're going to have some bell pepper, cilantro, all your ginger, garlic, chilies, cumin, and pork, um, and a touch of uh, sesame oil. Oh, gosh. Finish it off. Oh, stuck a little onion. Oh, my gosh. Y'all aren't holding back on the flavor on that one. Mm -mm. That was a lot of great seasoning on there. Mm. And you start to see that there's so many ingredients that appear in Chinese cooking that you find in Latino cooking, in mm -hmm. Italian cooking, in, mm -hmm. in French cooking. The cumin lamb dish has elements of Hispanic culture plus Szechuan culture kind of mixed together. You have that cumin on the outside, a little bit of cilantro action, the onions that are in there as well, but the way it's prepared with some of that oil as well, I mean, that's just Szechuan flavor loaded into that lamb. Garlic noodles. Yep. I mean, super popular, and you even I mean, you mix them up so perfectly. And look at that. So it's going to be ginger, garlic, um, a little bit of sugar, uh, salt, um, salt on peppercorn, the dried red chilies, and then the chili oil, and mm -hmm. garnish with some uh, green onions and uh, bean sprouts. Mm. Oh wow. The garlic noodles are cold noodles, but they're loaded with flavor. And it's fun when you're trying different elements on the table, like hot, a little bit spicy. The garlic noodles kind of help round everything out. Spicy, savory chicken, one of my favorite dishes. But, and there's so much going on to it. How do you prepare it out here? Deep fried and then sauteed. Ginger, garlic, uh, dried red chilies, Szechuan peppercorn, a um, little bit of green onions, and. That's, that's it. The peppercorn is going to cause that numbing sensation in your mouth. Mm. I'm going to throw in a little pepper in there. One of my favorite Szechuan dishes is the spicy savory chicken. It has all those crispy notes you want on the outside of the chicken, but then the little spicy peppers that are in there, if you eat enough of them, it actually numbs your mouth up, which is <laughs> the first time I did it freaked me out. But once you get used to it, it is so fun. It's a different experience that you'll want to try. Everything is a home run. Thank you. Mm. Well, they say in, in Szechuanese cuisine, yi cai yi ge, bai cai bai wei. And it literally means no two dishes are the same. So if there are 100 different dishes, you'll have 100 different flavors going on. And it's very true. I mean, even with just the, the small example of dishes that we have right here in front of us, everything has its own elements that make it extremely unique. Thank you so much for having us out here. Szechuan House, this is where it's at. If you want to get authentic Szechuan style cuisine here in San Antonio, even in this area of Texas, I highly recommend coming out here. The staff is fantastic, the space is fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to keep eating. That pork belly is calling my name. Absolutely. That's a, absolutely go delicious. It. I got to go back. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we get a Shiner history lesson over some beers and brats. And next on the show, we head to the Hill Country for some great bites at a cozy historic spot. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Kerrville, Texas to go inside of a restaurant that's inside of a historical building that's serving up some delicious food. Let's go inside Rails. Joining me 
me now is Melissa Southern. She's one of the owners out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us out here. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. And right in front of us, we have some pasta, we have some steak, we have some shrimp. I mean, a little bit of everything, including the amazing desserts that you guys are known for out here, which we're gonna get into. But I gotta know first, what was this building before it was the restaurant? So this is the original train depot, and uh, we renovated it, but there's a lot of great history here, and that's one of the things that we really like about our, our old buildings. You know, we've got the original um, oak floors from 1890, and the old lumber yard, and um, it's just, you know, beautiful buildings, and on top of that, good food. This property used to be a train depot and a lumber yard back in 1887. Through that time, it's transformed. A lot of it is still here, so when you come walking around, you can enjoy a lot of the history. There's two historical markers that are here as well that you can read up on it, but the coolest thing is that when you walk inside the building, there's actually little spots that they left untouched. So it's really like you're coming here, you're dining, but you're also getting a piece of Texas history. Just a lot of cool history, but the food is why people come out here. And I want to know what's going on with this first dish right in front of us. It's a pasta dish with a little bit of chicken. It is, so that's one of our most popular uh, pasta dishes. It's a creamy penne chicken. Uh, it's got fresh asparagus. We make our own um, sauce in-house, literally to order. Uh, roasted red bell peppers, grilled chicken breast, and this lovely Alfredo sauce. That sauce is incredible. I know. The penne chicken pasta out here at Rails comes out with a house-made sauce that they're making to order, plus roasted red bell peppers, some asparagus, and the chicken on there. And let me tell you, the al dente pasta mixed up with the chicken and the sauce, absolutely delicious. Some of the Parmesan cheese on top as well gives you that little bit of saltiness that you want in the bite, and it's a really good dish. I want to talk about this shrimp salad. What's going on with that one? So this is our southwestern version of maybe a Caesar. Um, it's um, grilled shrimp. It has a little bit of spice on it, but you know, not, not to get too carried away. A great chipotle aioli as the dressing, um, some house-made croutons, and just what you would think of as a standard, you know, Caesar base with the romaine. And um, we also add some roasted pepitas. So you know, those are little right. toasted um, pumpkin seeds, right. and we season them in house and roast them as well. That's the bite right there. <laughs> If you're looking for a seafood dish on the menu, I highly recommend the Shrimp Southwest Caesar Salad. Has some of the shrimp on top, a smoky aioli sauce on there as well, corn and black beans, kind of like a Southwest relish on there, tomatoes, croutons, a really great bite, and a large salad that's gonna fill you up. Now, if shrimp is not something that you wanna go for, don't worry, there's a lot of options, including on the salad option, you have a beef tenderloin salad as well. But if you're looking for something that's gonna fill you up, get you going, Osobuco. And you guys are actually doing it a little bit different. Talk to me about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, normally you think of osobuco, of course, it literally just means a bone that you can, you know, set in your <laughs> yeah. mouth, right? But so normally people use veal, but we tried to change it up a little bit and we use pork. So it's a slow cooked pork shank and it's covered in a traditional French demi glace and served over our red skin mashed potatoes. It really is just perfect comfort food. Wonderful. Nice and tender, cooked to perfection. That's delicious. <laughs> the osobuco out here is made with pork shank, a demi-glaze sauce on top, red skin mashed potatoes, spinach on the side as well. You can kind of mix it all together, the brightness from the spinach, some of that saltiness from the demi-glaze and that fork tender meat off the bone. Super delicious and it's gonna fill you up. If, if there wasn't people around me, I would grab it by the bone and just go. <laughs> That's delicious. Now, when you're walking around the property, you're enjoying yourself, maybe it's after or even before you're, you're gonna eat, you're gonna see a little bakery off to the side as well. It's like called the sweeter side, right? That's right, it's the sweeter side of rails. Yes. And you have those options actually at the restaurant as well. You have the cakes and you have the pies and stuff, all kinds of things. But this right here is a cake that caught our attention. What's going on with this one? You know, this is a cake we've had for uh, 17 years, and uh, it usually sells out the minute we make it. You know, we can't make it through a lunch shift, you know, with, without selling out the whole cake. Um, it's called our pina colada cake. Ooh. And so it's got toasted coconut, uh, spiced rum, pineapple chunks, and then the frosting is a cream cheese frosting that's also infused with spiced rum. I'm sorry, Melissa. I might be taking that one, all right? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll share. You guys, this is such a cool place. The rails out here is definitely a go-to spot in Carville. Come get the food, come get the desserts. Enjoy yourself, Melissa. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am gonna eat all this though, okay? <laughs> all right. <laughs> mm. Okay, I'll come to the 
Coming up later on Texas Eats, comfort food favorites from an iconic veteran-owned Eastside Soul Food restaurant. And next on the show, we get a Shiner history lesson over some beers and brats. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in Green to catch up with our friend brewmaster Jimmy Mort from the Spotsil Brewery to get a history lesson on Shiner beer. Plus, we're going to eat some good grub. Let's go inside the Green Grove. Joining me now is Brewmaster Jimmy from the Spotsil Brewery in Shiner, Texas, where they make Shiner. And we have a lot of food in front of us right here at Green Grove. And we're going to be learning about Shiner, how it was made, how it got started. And what better way than with some good food, right? Oh man, that's how you started <laughs> out. That's with some good food. There's a lot of different beers that Shiner makes. 1909 and the Premium are actually like the well-known, most iconic beers that y'all are brewing, right? Oh right. Uh, you know, I've been at the brewery 43 years, and we've been <laughs> brewing beer at Spetzel for 112. So I, I, I got a little bit of the history here. <laughs> so you know, Shiner Premium is one of the oldest beer we make, and uh, it's been around forever, it, even before Shiner Bach, in which Shiner Bach came in. You know, you know, it's a seasonal in, in, in the 70s and, and uh, you know, with premium, you know, that's the first beer I've ever drank. You know, coming to the brewery as a, as a kid with mom and dad. <laughs> and uh, here we, we, we come back, you know, 112 years later and we look at making a beer called Shiner 1909. This is just a old fashioned lager that we felt like that ingredients they would have had in 1909, back when a group of German Czech uh, immigrants settled in Shiner. Jimmy has been working at the Spotsil Brewery since he was 17 years old. So when you talk with him, he's actually like opening up a vault of knowledge and history about the brewery and about the Shiner brand and the city. Now, where did the name Spetzel come from? Spetzel came from uh, Cosmo Spetzel. Uh, he was the original brewmaster of Spetzel Brewery. We uh, had Shiner Brewing Association found it. They didn't actually have a, you know, a, a brewmaster per se. So they had to bring one in because they made pretty bad beer early. So they had to bring one in, which was a professional and Cosmo Spetzel came in. And to this day, uh, our name is Spetzel Brewery. We kept the name. When Shiner Bach came out in the 70s, that was kind of the one, right? It became your flagship. Yeah, Shiner Bach became our flagship. And it's kind of funny how it done that. <laughs> you know, it, uh, as a seasonal, it started out selling the Shiner Premium. And then finally, we had to say, hey, we got to do something here. So we made it full time. And uh, actually, uh, you know, Austin, Texas was, a, 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 you know, a, a big sales of Shiner Bach for us. I mean, the kids at the college uh, fell in love with Shiner Bach. You know, it was uniquely different, you know, when you had this amber lager sitting on in, in a pitcher and uniquely different. But when you poured it in a glass and actually drank it, it was just a great sessional beer that you could drink many of. So we've learned the history of Shiner, where it came from, how it got started. Let's drink some of it, because that's my favorite part of history is when you get to eat and drink it, right? And exactly. try some of the food that's out here. Let's start with the 1909. 1909. Here's, okay, take a sip. Here we go. It's so smooth. The water is the most important part, right? Oh, again, we've got a well. It's an artesian well. Been there since 1909. Hand dug well, one water, one hop, you know, <laughs> one malt, yeah. and, you know, one yeast. So we're looking at, uh, you know, just something very basic, but very flavorful. Now we're going to jump over, open up the Shiner Premium. This is the one. This is it. This is what puts you all on the map. Well, Cheers. Yeah, th yeah, this is the one and one of our oldest beers we make. Yes. Right here, Shiner and we're actually, Premium. We're going to be enjoying that here with an apple bacon brat, the sauerkraut on top, a little bit of sauce action as well, something that you can get when you come visit out here. So how important it is for you guys to have Shiner a part of your business? You know, when we got down here to Green, it was the quintessential Texas beer. Um, if you're going to be in Green, Texas, you got to have a Shiner. Finish it with the beer. Sure. There we go. Jimmy, thank you so much for being out here with us. You guys are out here at Green Grove, right here in Green, right outside New Braunfels. Right? People think it's all the same, but it is different. A lot mm -hmm. of history out here. Come and visit. There's so many great things to come out here and enjoy. Plus, get the food, get a little bit of Shiner, drink and eat some history when you're out here as well. Thank, thank you. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here on the southeast side of San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up some of the best soul food in the city. Let's go inside Mr. and Mrs. G's. <music> J 
Joining me now is Vicki Adams. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. G's and the current director of the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you. And right in front of us, we have all the hits. When yes. you come down here, these are the ones you have to get, right? Yes, these are it. And we also have some Kool-Aid on the side to wash it all down. But I have to know, before we get started, I mean, 31 years in San Antonio. Yeah. That is incredible. Yes. And yes, talk to is. me about the legacy uh, that your father uh, left to the city. Um, I think he just left, um, honestly, a whole bunch of deliciousness. Um, and just his love for cooking, um, his passion for serving others. Um, that's, what, that's what he's left behind. Even though Mr. and Mrs. G have both passed away, Vicki continues their legacy every single day when she opens the restaurant. You served in the military, which thank you for your service, but your father served as well. He did. And you know, his whole life was about service. And then he came here and yes. opened up a restaurant. So he spent 20 years in the Air Force. Um, even, even his 20 years that he was in the Air Force, I can remember we grew up on Brooks Air Force Base. Um, I can remember that, I and mean, he cooked then. I mean, all of the neighborhood kids ate at his house. He wanted to be here at Mr. and Mrs. G's. This is what he was all about. And this is what he knew, and he knew it very well. It's because of my dad. I mean, I, that's that's why I am who I am, and it's why I do what I do. He he taught me to give back, and um, and and I serve the community as well. I love what he left me with, and I will carry it on for for my for the remainder of my life. Now, I want to start with this one right here because when you come out, the meatloaf is like one of the top dishes, it best is. sellers. How is it prepared? They just take the, the ground beef and the crackers and then we add our special blend of seasoning and, um, and, and we bake it to perfection and we make our gravy from scratch and we just smother it in our gravy and that just adds the finishing touch to it. Here we go, the meatloaf. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gravy. One of my favorite comfort foods of all time is meatloaf. And out here at Mr. and Mrs. G's, they're smothering it in their house-made gravy they're making with the drippings from the pan. And you can get all different sides out there with it as well. But man, I tell you what, all you need is that meatloaf and that gravy together. It is the ultimate bite. But the smothered steak, you said that one just like flies and you can't even hold on to it that long. We sell out of it every time, every day that we sell it, serve it, we sell out of it. And how is this one prepared? Uh, so again, um, so we just do a light breading on it and then deep fry it and then we, again, we have our, our special gravy and smother it, let it sit in that, that nice gravy for a couple of hours and uh, we add our little special seasonings to, to that one for flavor as well. Oh, cheers, cheers. The smothered steak. Mm -hmm. That's the one. The smothered steak is lightly breaded, deep fried, and just falls apart in your mouth when you take that bite. They got that same gravy that they're putting on everything else, which is just amazing at rocks. And then you get that flavor from the smothered steak. You put that together, it's like the most insane comfort food bite. Now, when you think of traditional, just like comfort food, especially when you're in the South, what comes up? Fried chicken. Yes. That has to be a part of what to you be. try. It has and to that's what be. It has to be. This is possibly like the most perfect plate ever. Skin, that Look crunchy at that. skin. The yeah. skin is nice yeah. and crunchy. That's right. yeah. But I gotta try the skin first. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Mm. Wow. It's juicy. Not juicy. The fried chicken out here at Mr. and Mrs. G's has the right amount of crunch on the outside, lightly breaded as well. A little bit of that corn starch, so you get that extra crunch. And then on the inside, just super moist, packed with flavor. This is so good. And there's so much flavor on that. Mm -hmm. This plate right here is pure perfection. Mac mm -hmm. and cheese, collard greens, fried chicken, cornbread in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. And those black eyed peas. That is delicious. Thank you so much for having us out here, you guys. Mr. and Mrs. G's, a part of San Antonio history, and just, you know, a great spot to come visit if you're looking for authentic Southern cuisine. This is just comfort food. You're gonna take a nap in the back somewhere. <laughs> for, <You> sure. Better... <laughs> for sure, for <laughs> sure, yes. So thank you so much, give us some love, give us yes, some elbow. Yes, thank you. yes. And next on the show, we travel up to New Braunfels to check out all the best foods Worst Fest has to offer. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here at Landa Park in New Braunfels to go on a food tour at Worst Fest, the 10-day salute to sausage. Let's go eat some food. 
Joining me now is Don Kaler. She is the development director for the communities and schools in South Central Texas. And we're out here at the booth with fried pickle fries. Look at this. Yay. This is where it's at. Now, pickles already are just fantastic. Now you deep fry them, you put batter on them. It's going to make them even that much better. You got a little ranch cup on the side as well. I'm going to dip mine in. I'm going for it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Joining me now is Denton Townsend. He is with the New Braunfels Elks Lodge. Thank you so much for having us out here. This is where you get your donut kebab out here at Worst Fest. And check these things out. They're loaded to They're the brim. Awesome. And how popular are these items? They're very popular. So we started making these probably about eight years ago, and uh, Worst Fest recognized that they were the street food of Germany. That's All right, it. cheers to you, sir. Cheers. Beep. Here we go. <laughs> Joining me now is Mike Melly. He's the booth coordinator out here for the New Braunfels Little League booth where they're serving up pork chop on a stick. That's exactly what you want when you come out here. That's what I always dream of throughout the year. I'm like, I can't wait for Worst Fest to come back. It's pork chop on a stick. The inspiration is a man named Mr. John Ellis who invented this. These are such an iconic bite when you come out here to the event that we have to do it. Comes with a little roll on the bottom as well. I mean, this is what you want. Here's the you, Dave. Oh my goodness. Joining me now is Glenn Herman. He's the president of the Braunfels Evening Lions, and we're over here at the booth to try some fried Oreos. This is such a classic fried food gift to the universe, right? It is. <laughs> You're covering them in powdered sugar. Correct. These are fried to perfection. Oreo on the inside. Check that out. Glenn, you ready to try some? Uh, How yeah, hot are these? They're probably piping hot, aren't they? They're hot out of the oven. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Eek. Oh my goodness. Joining me now is Tiffany Bain. She is on the board with the Comel County Senior Citizens Foundation. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for stopping by. Now this booth is selling all kinds of goodies and deliciousness, but we're highlighting this item right here. This is the schnitzel sandwich with the house-made potato salad on the side. People come to this festival from all over the world just to have our famous potato salad. Really? Really. Cheers. Oh wow. Give me some love. That's out of control. Joining me now is President-elect out here at Worst Fest, Miles Granzine. Thank you so much for having us out at your booth. Thank you. And right here, you have a Reuben Taschen and then the popular, the famous Worst and yes. Now, what makes this element so tasty? What are the items that are inside of it? Well, we first start with a uh, pita, and then we use the broth, and then we use the uh, sauerkraut, and then bell peppers and onions. Cheers. Cheers. Thank Uh -huh. <laughs> Joining me now is Kelly McClard. Thank you so much for having us out here yeah, at your booth. Thank you. And then this is where you're going to get sausage on a stick when you're out here, which is the essential item you have to get yes. when you're visiting Worst Fest. <laughs> you guys, we're wrapping it up out here at Worst Fest. This is how you do it. Come out here, bring the family. You have this weekend, and then it's going to be gone until next year. So make sure you That's come out right. and party while you can. Thank you so much. Prost. 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 Texas Eats will be right back. go to all the delicious restaurants that you see here on the show you have to have a reliable vehicle and that's why we're out here today at Vic Vaughn Toyota Bernie and with me as always the deal maker Chris Franklin yo what's up everybody and now we're out here in a lot and there are a lot of free owned vehicles yes there are a lot <laughs> we've got a little bit of everything we got cars starting around ten thousand dollars and all the way up to a Hellcat that's awesome now if you're looking for a vehicle you're going to different lots you're going to notice that a lot of people don't have as many vehicles as they used to don't worry Vic Von Toyota Bernie's got you covered plus you can go to the website to get more information toyotabernie.com that's right all right so the Hellcat we can go drive that right now yeah absolutely <laughs> let's go <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information and a map on all the restaurants that you've seen on today's show, just go to our website, kset.com slash Texas Eats. And to get more information on all the vehicles you see out here at Vic Von Toyota Bernie, just go to their website, toyotaburning.com. Follow us on social media at KSAT Texas Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats. <laughs>